Hi there, this is Irv Shapiro, a.k.a. Dr. Vax. And the Friday after Thanksgiving, I received this box from Monoprice, shipped to me by Amazon, and it contains a Monoprice MP Select version 2, MP Select Mini version 2 printer, and we're going to unbox it, set it up, and start the first print. Now, this is the third 3D printer that I've received. I also have a Prusa i3 Mark III and a Creality Ender V. And they're at three different price points. This is a $180 printer. The Ender V is a $320 printer. And the Prusa is a $750 printer. Theoretically, you would assume that there's no way to compare one to another because they're at such dramatically different prices. But technology tends to compress differences today, and so we're going to see what you can do with this $180 printer and whether it's perhaps the ideal way if you want to first get started with 3D printing, you're not sure it's going to be something you're interested in, this might be a good place to start, and then you might want to upgrade to a more expensive printer, perhaps a, one of the Ender models or one of the Prusa models. Now, this printer has a relatively small print area, which is one of the reasons it's less expensive. It's 120 by 120 by 120 millimeters. It does have a heated print bed and an all-metal extruder. What that means is it can print at relatively high temperatures, up to 230 degrees centigrade. Now, to put that in perspective, the Prusa Mark III is able to print up to 290 to 300 degrees centigrade. So it can't use all of the filament types that you can print on a $750 printer, but this is under $200. Because it has a heated print bed, it can potentially print materials like ABS and PET. Now, these three-letter alphabet names for filaments, if you're not familiar with it already, are just um, acronyms for complex chemical names. And so, as an example, to give you a point of reference, PLA is a very easy-to-use filament. It's very low cost. It works on pretty much any uh, filament-based, FDM-based printer. PET is a filament that requires a higher temperature to print, but therefore it's a little more robust for, let's say, using it inside an auto where it could get fairly hot uh, late in the day. ABS is a relatively complex filament to print. It's the plastic that's used in Lego, and prior to the creation of PET variants, most printers did PLA and ABS. ABS was hard, PLA was easy. PET is a really nice compromise in the middle. This printer should be able to print those filaments, perhaps not more exotic filaments like nylon or TPU, which is flexible filament. In addition, a couple unusual features on this printer. It does claim to support Wi-Fi. We'll see how well that works. Um, as I mentioned, it's both an all-metal extruder and a heated print bed, but the print bed is not removable. If you recall, the print bed is the surface that your print is on, and when you have a removable print bed, you just flex it to get your print off. Um, both the ender and the Prusa have removable print beds. This does not. Now, a little bit of trivia about this printer before we open it up. It is manufactured in China. It does say that on the box. It's actually manufactured by a company called Mal Yan. M-A-L-Y-A-N. You can Google that. On their website, this is the Mal Yan version 2 printer. And um, I believe it's the Model 200 version 2. It is interesting to note they have a version 3 coming out. And that does have a removable print bed, and it does auto-calibrate the print bed. In this particular case, the leveling of the print bed, making sure that it's particular, completely flat, is manual, the same as the Ender. Okay, let's get started 
and we'll open this up. Okay, now the fun begins. We're going to open the box carefully so as not to damage anything inside. There is a big stop when you first open it. Read this before unpacking. Do not return to reseller. If you're having trouble, contact Monoprice. Got it. Okay, there is a second box inside. And we'll see if we can get that out by opening the bottom. We'll need to break this apart for recycling anyways. And now we should be able to get that out easily. And this box will put off on the side. Okay, this box has a Monoprice label on it. Mini 3D printer version 2 E3D edition. Made in China. Okay. And that signifies that it has the all metal printhead. Thank you for your order. If you're not 100% satisfied, um, please contact customer service. Um, and uh, let's see what else is in here. It is a very, very small user's manual. Um, but it does include pictures. It tells you how to basically uh, set up the printer, turn it on, and adjust the first level layer. They recommend using Cura as the slicer. Uh, once again, if you're new to 3D printing, you take a 3D model, you have to divide it into individual layers, because 3D printers print in layers, and that's called a slicer, the software that does that. Okay, this is packed in styrofoam. There are two pieces here. Once again, we're going to let a little air in. That will make it easier to get this out. Okay, now we have our printer. I'm going to lay this flat. Okay, the Bowden tube. No, this actually is filament. Uh, this is a very, very little bit of filament. It's PLA. It looks pretty much generic, but it's just enough, I guess, to do your first print. Here in this box, we have the power brick. The power brick uh, does say made in China, but it's completely sealed. And it is uh, AC 100 to 240, so you could use this both in the United States and overseas. We'll open this up. And as you can see here, the printer is fully assembled. So we're going to take this out of the box and get started. There's a little bit of silicon in here. Uh, silica in here, which is silica gel, which uh, keeps uh, moisture away. In this box, we have the other part of the power cord. We have the plastic scraper. Not sure. This looks like it is the spool, the holder for the spool of filament. And this is a uh, USB cable. We have a Allen wrench and we have a uh, mini SD card, which probably has all of the materials for the first print on it. And here we go. Um, there is some tape on the side here. Uh, there is also some plastic on this display. We'll take that off. We'll take this tape off. And the print area is tiny. Um, it is a fixed uh, print plate, but it does feel like it has some type of surface, maybe like a build tech surface or something on it. Uh, there's a little bit of glue here on the edge, um, but uh, 
the fit and finish overall of this printer uh, looks very nice. Uh, you literally could probably throw this in your suitcase and take it with you when you go to visit uh, your grandchildren. Here's the Bowden cable that's all uh, configured already. Uh, here's where you insert your filament. Um, so uh, the next step is to take a quick look at the user's guide and then we'll be right back and we will plug this in and do our first print. Okay, I finished uh, reviewing the user manual and my first comment is that it was clearly for the version 1 printer. There are two things I noticed right away. The first is the version 1 printer must have come with some form of tape surface on the tape on top of the print surface. Um, this has been replaced with a new permanent uh, coating on the print surface because in the user manual it says if the tape is damaged, replace it with painter's tape or other um, 3D printing tape. In addition, in the menus, uh, they refer to a temperature menu, um, which is a little different than we'll see is in the current version 2 printer. So let's get started. It's a very easy printer to use. Um, there's an on-off switch on the back. We're going to power that on. You'll see that this colored display is then illuminated. This dial here is used to move around on the color display and you depress the dial to take an action. Um, this has all the standard features of a 3D printer. This is a Bowden style extruder. That means that the filament is driven external by an external motor from the extruder. Whereas on the Prusa, as an example, the motor that drives the filament, that grabs the filament, is right on the extruder, and it comes across a tube. The advantage of this is it makes this printhead very light, and therefore the mechanics can be less robust. I do notice a little bit of give movement in this mechanism. We'll have to see how that affects accuracy. So this is the printhead with a fan on the top. This is the... Um, drive mechanism for driving the filament. There's a lever here on the back that you squeeze in order to release it so that you can push your filament in. So let's get started and showing you, show you how you would use this printer. It, it appears to be very, very simple. So the first thing you do on all 3D printers is you preheat for the material you're going to use. Um, we're going to preheat the nozzle to 200 degrees. And we're going to preheat the print bed to 50 should be fine. And then we have to wait for this to get up to temperature. Um, I chose 200 degrees because the filament that they ship with this printer is PLA 1.75 millimeters rated at 190 to 210 centimeters. I chose 50 degrees for the bed because 50 or 60 degrees is pretty typical for PLA. So we'll get ready to load this filament in. This filament goes on this uh, little reel here on the side. Um, clearly, you're going to want to, this is not very tall, so if you're using a larger uh, spool, you're going to have to have the spool off the end of the table. Um, that is a disadvantage of a smaller printer. It should be fine for now. I'm going to clip my filament at a 45 degree angle with a diagonal clipper. And we'll see if we're, the extruder is up to temperature, 192, 196, 200. There we go. So now that the extruder is up to temperature, we can load the filament. To load the filament, I really don't like this filament holder. So I'm going to take and move the printer over just a little bit so that this is off the edge here so it doesn't keep hitting the table here. Okay, so I'm going to depress this lever and begin, let's see if I can get this to load, and there we go, there we go, was a little tricky. Now we're going to press it in until it hits the end of the extruder, and then we'll release it. I think we can do better, my guess is somebody's already made a third party filament holder um, for this. Now we're going to take and 
um, go to move and see go to extruder uh, and turn it to the extrude side and let's see if filament comes out but before we do that let's actually move this up a little bit so that we can see what's happening So each time we turn it, it moves up just a little tiny bit, not very much. So we have to turn it quite a bit here in order to get it high enough so that we'll be able to see if our filament is coming out when we go to extrude it. It says press to exit. We will exit. We'll go to back. We'll go back to move. This time we'll select extruder again. And we'll tell it to extrude. Ah, so this is pulling the filament through. I can feel it moving here. So I'll keep turning until we see. There we go. Okay, the extruder uh, seems to be working properly. Our filament has extruded. Um, so now we're going to scrape this off here so it doesn't impact our print. Um, this filament is not the best PLA I've seen. It seems to be a bit brittle. Um, but we'll see if that impacts what we're doing. Now we're going to go to home. Then we'll go back. And now let's do a print. So print. And it says cat.gcode. So there are a series of files on here. Some are executable files. So those must be to load on your Windows machine. There's a version of Cura here. I have a Mac that won't help me. Um, but, um, and uh, there is a cat.g code. So we're going to select that. And a very nice information display is displayed here. It shows the current nozzle temperature, 199. It just went to 200. The bed temperature, uh, speed is currently um, set at 1.0. Ah, we seem to be getting a little extra filament there. So let's see what happens here and we'll let this get started. It's interesting, it did not print an index line or a waste line in the beginning. Okay, the cat has finished printing. It took a total of 2 hours and 53 minutes to print, which is quite a long time for a print of this size. Let's see if this is going to just snap off. Now that the print bed is cool, it is not. Let's see if we can get this off with the plastic scraper. And I cannot. So fortunately, I do have a metal scraper here. Which is definitely was necessary to get a corner up. Okay, the bottom looks quite nice. Uh, there's a lot of stringing on the top. Um, doesn't really affect the print terribly. It almost seems like, oh, interestingly enough, it says finished, but it didn't actually finish this print. And we're just about out of filament, so I'm not quite sure what happened, because the reason there was stringing is this print didn't completely finish. Um, we will have to try this again with more filament. We probably ran out of filament because I did a couple tests on the bed uh, adhesion. I wanted to make sure the bed was properly level before I started this print off camera. Um, and that's probably why the roll they provided was not quite enough. The areas that did print look quite nice. Let's see, the raft came right off. So the stringing may not be... Uh, may have been that it ran out of filament. So we will try another print on this and see what happens. Um, but the layers look quite clean. A uh, little bit of an artifact here and there, but it looks quite clean. So what have I learned so far? Well, first, it is absolutely remarkable that you can purchase a fully functional 3D printer, fully assembled, ready to go um, for $180. And 
in terms of this printer, it does what you would expect. Um, it's an entry-level printer. It has a very small print volume. It does use a prior generation of technology for the print bed. Uh, you saw that I had to take out a metal scraper to get that off, which means that over time, this probably will get scratched up pretty good, and I assume you can buy replacement sheets for this. Um, it works. Because it is so slow, though, it does uh, require you to have a bit of patience. A, that balances with the fact that you're not printing something very big here. So would I buy this as my very first printer? Well, if I was going to occasionally 3D print something, and I was treating it strictly as a casual hobby, this is an interesting choice. But for $50 or $75 more, um, you can step up to a printer with a larger print volume. It may be a kit, however, or even a printer with a larger print volume and some additional features from Monoprice. So I'm very impressed that Monoprice puts together a very cost-effective printer um, that worked right out of the box. It was fully calibrated right out of the box. Um, that is absolutely a plus, and I would consider other printers up their line if I wanted a fully assembled printer. If I was willing to purchase a kit, I probably would look seriously at the Creality Ender line, either the Ender 5 that I have or the Ender 3, Ender 3 Plus. plus. And for higher-end printers, there are a number of choices. The, the Prusa at under $1,000 is pretty much the gold standard. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is uh, Irv Shapiro, a.k.a. Dr. Vax. If you found this useful, please uh, like this, please subscribe, and please tell everyone you know about this channel. I'm just getting started and looking for subscribers to help make this a worthwhile endeavor. Thanks. Have a good day.